All right, so we got Drake here. We're going to walk through accessing the BYU independent study courses. A uh, couple of background things. There's a document that I sent to you, and this is okay. So uh, I sent you this document. Uh, it's an overview of uh, the different courses that are available there. Uh, as of right now, there are about 88 courses, I think uh, they said, and they plan to. Uh, add another hundred or so by the time I think it was February rolls around. Um, so lots of, uh, you know, a lot of the core, all the core subjects are there. So language arts, math, science, you know, math, seventh grade math, eighth grade math, math one, two, three. Um, see a lot of languages there, which is kind of nice. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, PE courses. I guess for lack of a better term. I don't know if that's the politically correct term. <laughs> uh, Japanese courses. So you can see there's there's a ton there. Uh, and you can see all these listed in uh, when you go into commons, but they don't have the, the descriptions there. So might be a good thing to... There you go. Intermediate swimming, walking, fitness, weight training. So all those courses there. The courses are complete. Uh, there are no... Um, like little shells, but each course is has you know full scope and sequence designed by Utah teachers uh, to you know BYU uses these for for credit recovery and things like that, and so the license with UEN is that we we must use these in a a, com, or a, a blended environment, so we must see these students at least sometime face to face, uh, and it can't be used for credit recovery because um, that's Kind of BYU's thing, but we're uh, if you know teacher. The reason why UEN licensed them is that um, you know teachers coming into Canvas, it's pretty intimidating where mm -hmm. you are facing a, a blank screen and you know a year worth of content to try to to put in there. And so it's it's meant to be a good starting off point. You, uh, all of these courses are completely customizable. You can unpublish and not use pieces you don't want to use. You can edit uh, much the content. Uh, some of the content, like like in language arts, they have stories and things like that. They're using what they call like iframes to embed content from BYU servers. And so stuff like that, you can't go in and change. If you don't want to use it, you just unpublish the page and use use your own story or, you know, use something that's that's already in your class. Okay. Um, does that make sense on how to use them? Yeah, so I just had one question. You said that there was 100 courses that will be added. Yeah. Is that correct? Um, so in our curriculum cabinet meeting, we had our uh, fine arts representative. She was concerned that there wasn't any music or dance classes available. Okay. Is there, I mean, what do you think the odds of those be, being added in that next batch? I don't know. Uh, they didn't show us a roadmap. They just showed us yeah. uh, the ones that were there. Uh, and I, I just know that there are more more to come. So. The only reason I ask is because they they ask us if we, they needed to be there, and the, to my understanding, oh. those those courses were the only ones there. So I told them they didn't need to come, and I wonder if I should have them come, well, just it, based off the chance that something they'll be interested in will be added later. You on. you could address it with a fifteen minute meeting like we're going to do now, you know, yeah, if and true. when they come. So it's it's not rocket science. So. Uh, it's just knowing where to go and what to do okay. with them. Uh, so kind of like with any course that you get out of the commons, there really is no awesome way to preview it before you, it's it's in one mm -hmm. of your courses. So best, uh, best practices from your dashboard, come here to start a new course and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine BYU uh, Experiment. You can call it whatever you want. Keep it private because this is only kind of for for your own um, use within your students, and you also don't want to share these back out uh, to the comp. Ah, excuse me, to the Commons, because we are licensing these courses. Create the course, and I'll get that empty shell. And from here, let's jump over to the Commons. And so, uh, we have made sure that that Miller District and the other districts in the SCDC region have been added to a few consortiums, and it's basically a consortium is how big of a bucket do you want to share with 
right? So the commons is like every anyone that's using Canvas around the world. If they share a course to commons, anybody can search for it, access it, use it, whatever you decide to share up there. Uh, but we've kind of developed these smaller ones. We've got one that, that we can use just within the region if we want. You've got your own school district one. So if you're having you know teachers develop uh, benchmark assessments or stuff like that that you just want to use within your district, they can build them in Canvas, share them through the district consortium, and then you know kind of filter down what's being there. There's a UEN, so that's kind of Utah uh, non-secondary, or it's you know elementary secondary but non-university uh, place to share. But then all the BYU courses are here in the uh, blended resources. They didn't want to call them online. They want to make sure that again you're you know you're you're seeing these kids at least part of the time. Yeah. Um, and so you can come in here and search if you know that I want to do Japanese. I would be in trouble if I tried to teach Japanese, but maybe with a good enough course, I'd be okay. Um, but I'm a science guy, so I'll go like look for biology. And so we've got human anatomy, biology, part one, part two. So if it's a two semester course, they break it up into part one, part two. They don't call it semester one, semester two, but that's that's basically the, the thought behind it. So AP biology, human anatomy, and then regular biology one and two. And if I want to go grab it, Again, this is as good as the, um, they talk more about the licensing here than they do about the, uh, what's in the course. And so that's why this, this document's a good one uh, to share so they can go in and, and see what those courses are. Uh, you can kind of slide through here to see what, you know, the names of the pages are. They're very helpful. Introduction, introduction, introduction. Uh, quizzes, the nice thing about these, these courses, they do have full uh, quiz banks. And so you can come in and you know use the quizzes that they have or use the banks that they've generated to create your own you know subsets or sub quizzes or things like that. But again, they're all they're all there, loaded and ready to go, and then everything's organized into those those modules. Um, and so if it's something that I want to check out or use, uh, the process is I find the course I want to get, I come over here to tell it which of my courses I want it to be imported into and then import into course. You could choose more than one of these. I wouldn't put it into a live, you know, course that is being synced with Aspire or PowerSchool in your guys' case right now uh, because it brings everything over and, and then you'd be doing a lot of weeding and stuff if you don't want to use it. Uh, if you bring it into a, you know, a, an experimental course like this, then you can copy chunks between your two classes uh, and just use the bits that you want as you go. Uh, you can, of course, copy everything over if you want, but let's show how to do that. So importing a course, depending on the size of the course, it may take a minute or two. It may take um, uh, a couple of minutes, five or so. You can always do the download and upload, but it's it's if you import it into the course using this, um, using the Commons interface, if BYU goes in and updates this course, you'll get a notification that says, hey, this course has been updated with, with X, Y, and Z. Do you want to take the updates or no? And so you've always got a, the most current version of the course. Um, so let's go back and see if it's done. Head back to my dashboard. There's my experimental. Open that guy up. And now if I go to pages, nothing yet, so I need to be be more patient, maybe. Ah, here we go. So that one's still running. All right, looks like our import is completed. So we should now be able to go into uh, pages and see lots of lots of nice pages with content and things on it. So there's all those introductory pages. If I go to quizzes, I can see all of my the quizzes that are there, self-check. So after each lesson, there's a little self-check, a little quick. Um, let's just jump into modules and see how everything's organized. And so this is a little guide for the instructors to say, you know, go in and change this, change this, you know, customize your introduction or whatever. Uh, course introduction, syllabus, contact information, that's probably another one your, your folks want to either change or, you know, if they're, they just want to unpublish it <laughs> since they're going to be working with the kids uh, live in person. That'll be good. So 
pretest. Let's check out unit one introduction. And again, the nice thing about having them in modules is that the, the sequence is there. I can go through, you know, step by step. And so this really can be kind of self-guided. It's again, these are meant to be independent study courses, um, but they still want, you know, to have that teacher interaction, that live, that live stuff. So if there's stuff you'd prefer to do in person with your kids, just unpublish the page, each little page or whatever, just if you don't want them to see it, just click on publish, but everything else should still be there. Go into the introduction. Here's what you're going to learn. Very good. Read the history of science. And so here, when you see these little frames, that's kind of the, the visual cue to you that this is BYU hosted content. So this is a web page that's hosted on BYU sites. And so these bits are not editable. So if you wanted to use a textbook here, you know, and point your kids to that, you can edit this page. Can you edit the page? You can't even edit the page. I uh, just unpublish this page and, you know, make a new one and say, let's refer to chapter one of, of our text or whatever for this. Um, going through, there's our self check. I'm not in as a student, but I could go into student view. Uh, I could preview the quiz, but like I said, it's, they're very well designed. They've been, they've been fine tuning these for, for a long time. Uh, quality courses and a huge step up from, you know, starting with nothing and trying to develop your own stuff from scratch. So, um, if there's only bits and pieces, like say I wanted to use, um, like take just the quizzes or maybe just a couple of pages or whatever um, into another course, here's what I do. I go to the course that I want to pull those in. Let's say I'm going to do this um, demo course. And then under settings for those courses, I'm going to go to import course content. It's going to say, what do you want to try to import? And I'm just going to copy a Canvas course. That means I have it. It's one of my courses. I'm just going to copy stuff between my, my two courses. It'll ask you what it is. So I'm going to call it BYU. There we go. Uh, all content or select specific content. So if you like the whole course, you want to move it into your PowerSchool uh, created class, you just say, excuse me, all content. Move it over and you're good to go. If you just want pages or quizzes or stuff like that, you can say select specific content. Uh, on these courses, they are none of them have any due dates. Um, so you don't need to adjust them or anything. If you're copying your own stuff from last year, you may want to say adjust that and either just remove the dates or try to shift them by, you know, whatever, how many days the calendar year is off this year from last. Um, normally, I just on those, I remove dates and then set the due dates as I go. And then it's, it's a little backwards when I'm importing content and I say specific content, I have to click import before it'll let me choose what content I want to grab. And so if I just, if I want all the modules, if I just want all the quizzes, or if I want a specific quiz, let's say I just want to get the pretest and the final exam. Select content, and then that's all that's going to be brought over and that shouldn't take too long to, to do. So copy pieces of it over, copy the whole thing over to use in your courses. And then once this runs, I should be able to go back to my demo class and I should have a couple of quizzes in there from, from this course. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. That's, that's the piece that I was missing is how to just copy bits and pieces of the okay. course over to your current course. I couldn't figure out how to do it. So. Yeah, it's a, it's there's that weird step that yeah. I just want a little bit, but then, okay, how do I pick that? You've got to start the import and then choose it. So now it says completed. So now if I go back to my dashboard and go to the DMS demo, I should now under quizzes have a couple of final exam and a pretest. And I think I probably want to do the pretest first, but I can move that. <laughs> There's no due dates on them, so I can I'll practice an assignment. I see. So I've got this as like a non-graded thing, and then this is a real life assignment. So there you go. Any other questions while we're in here?
Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Like, did, like, did you guys get turn it or uh, unit check? Do you know the plagiarism checker? Uh, we have something. I can't remember which one. Well, let's see. Let's see if you have anything turned on. Uh, assignments. Yeah, let's just say uh, I don't want a quiz. Those are all quizzes. Self check. Those are all quizzes. All right, so let's just make a new assignment. And so what you want to do is, it does not look like, let's see, external tool. So if the, the unit check doesn't use those external tool things, if you have the, if you did go with unit check, I doubt you went with turn it in because it's $3 per student per year plus like a couple thousand dollars per building to set it up. And mm. Unicheck was a dollar per student per year. Wow. Uh, so if, if you guys have purchased it, we talked about it at uh, BSWAT yesterday. Uh, let us know and we can, we can get it set up. But what it does, let me switch over to my SEDC. Uh, SEDC.structure.com. We've got it installed here. Uh, production. Canvas Playground. Do, do, do. Your picture's in the way. No assignment. Okay. And as long as you have... Doggone it, where is it? I thought we had it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Fi Choose file uploads. Maybe you do have it. File uploads, group assignment, peer reviews. Now, so you've got to choose file uploads. Uh, and then once this box comes up, you could choose unit check. And then what it does, I should have a couple of options here. Yeah. So it checks against uh, EBSCO, maybe, if EBSCO is still. <laughs> I don't know if you've been following that whole thing. Uh, or uh, Gale. And then it also checks against, you know, sources out on the web. And also, as you use it, it starts to build an institutional library. And so it checks that writing against all those different uh, sources. If you're, if you're having uh, a teacher, like having students turn in a, a couple of drafts before the final, you want to have them, say, exclude submissions from the institution library. Otherwise, the kids would have their papers checked against themselves. <laughs> be, yeah. but you know copying themselves but if it's final just do that um omit sources show the originality reports to students immediately so they see it uh for the teacher it's just integrated into speed grader so next to the submissions up in the upper right there's a percentage there's a uh, an originality score mm -hmm. the teachers can click on and go in and see um see what the what the scores are so I'm going to cancel this. Let me. Do I have one that's already classroom? Turn it in. Unit check test. Here we go. So I got some submissions. If I go to the speed grader, there we go. So here's the student example. Here's their originality score. And if I click on that, it'll open up a new tab, show me um, the paper. It'll highlight the areas where it thinks it's similar to something else. It'll show me um, the different places and the probabilities of where they got that stuff from, uh, whether they just reworded parts of it. Um, there is a color legend somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So the yellow is similarity. If it, notice it's a reference or citation. Um, and then if I wanted to go and actually see, you know, where those things came from, like 11%, I can open that up. There's the, the passage that it's based on. If I want to see the site, there's a link to it. And I can go out and see the original site and, you know, check it. So they're, they're referencing Netflix different versus Hulu plus. <laughs> So it's kind of a valuable tool, um, you know, if you, if you integrate it for all your, 
your Canvas users, then any teacher can use it. You know, language arts teachers certainly like to have this tool available, but you know, the more writing we can have our kids do and the more better writing we can have them do, the better off we are.